Hi, noble ones. Welcome back to the podcast where raw talk and real stories about emotions is what we are visiting on a weekly basis. And in this episode, I want to talk about anger and how it's a burial ground for our happiness. And I'm going to give you four things that I think can help us to handle anger better and move out of that as an emotion. So first, I want to thank everybody for showing back up to listen to the podcast. I hope this is helping you kind of work through some, um, I don't know, emotional states, triggers you may have, things you may be experiencing. And if you're joining us for the first time, I'm, I'm really excited that you're here. I would love it if you would like the um video or the podcast, share it, subscribe, and leave some comments. Let me know your feedback because it certainly is helpful to me to know what topics you guys want to hear about and whether or not, you know, this information is helpful. So let's get into why I chose this topic this week is because the last couple of weeks I've found myself pissed off, <laughs> really angry, which is not a I don't know, not something that I would consider myself to be an angry person. And I do have a history of using anger as a coping emotion, which I'll get into. But I thought just because of my personal reasons for having to kind of dig back into why I was angry, I thought it would be a great topic to cover. So first, I want to kind of talk about there's this spectrum of anger, right? And I think a lot of us are always taught like just the basics of emotion, you know, happiness, sadness, you know, anger being one of them. But anger, if you look at an actual like a, a feelings chart or a feelings wheel, or this is something that you can Google online and there's a, you know, you'll be able to find it. A lot of it's used in therapy and things like that, which it really helps people kind of broaden their range of emotions to kind of understand how they're feeling. So when you look at anger, you could say that you feel angry, but let me read some of these other forms of anger for you. There's revenge is a form of anger, vindictiveness, jealousy, spite, hatred, resentment, sarcasm, aggression, negativity, violence, pouting, stubbornness, rebellion, impatience. If you've ever felt any of those feelings or projected any of those things onto other people, it's actually on the spectrum of anger. So anger isn't always a bad thing. It definitely is an emotion that, you know, would, if someone's overstepping a boundary with you, if someone's not respecting you, if someone's not appreciating you, there's a reason for anger to come up. I'm not saying it's all bad, but um, it, it does have a tendency to bury other emotions. So there's an, there's an, an energy around anger, which allows us to still keep getting things done, to keep getting things accomplished in the world. And if you just look at like everything that's happening right now, we've got all this violence in the media. We've got the you know, control, trying to force people to make certain decisions about, you know, health or their, you know, political party or, you know, what causes they're standing up for. And there's all this blame and, and the fighting to be right and who's right and who's wrong. Though That's anger. So you can just see, like, if you turn on the news, it's an, it's a great example of how anger can work. You know, I think anger can also bring us to create change. You know, that's, that's a positive thing. You know, if enough people get angry about something that's not good, it's not going well. It's a great way to get somebody to innovate or to try to change something. So what I noticed though, last week was that I was using anger to mask some other emotions that were, again, buried inside of me that I didn't recognize until, you know, the next day. Because whenever you're doing emotional work or emotional processing, it just depends what else you have going on in your life. You don't always have the mo that, that moment to realize exactly what's going on. So I always just kind of sit and revisit it. So what I noticed was that the last couple of weeks I was using anger to mask like hurt, sadness, grief, 
and especially fear. We use anger a lot to mask fear. And so this is what I mean when I say like, it can be this burial ground where you don't realize that you're walking around holding all this anger and it's actually preventing you from feeling your feelings or feeling some of the better feelings that you might want to feel. So, you know, things like joy, peace, love, contentment, those can all just be squashed down because you've got so much anger going through you. So I thought back about, okay, what was familiar to me when I, when I felt angry over the last couple of weeks and what it brought me to is, and I remember saying this, and this is before I was doing any kind of emotional awareness work. And I was really struggling, you know, in and out of depression, or I was carrying that, you know, depression label with me. And I said this, I use anger as a mask for sadness and depression. And the way I would do that, and I'm sure some of you can relate to this is, and also like I was a mom, I'm raising kids, but my anger would build up. And then I would be the one that would like slam a cabinet, you know, in the kitchen or screech off in my car or, you know, do the silent treatment or pretend like my, um, the other person should know how I'm feeling just by like the look that I give them. And these are all like forms of suppressing anger and just not handling it in a healthy way. And the thing is, because I was bearing so much like sadness, the anger was kind of like turned against myself. And that's essentially what caused the depression. It's like you're not using your voice. You're not getting your needs met. You're not setting boundaries. There's all these things that you're not doing, which actually make you mad at yourself. But what you do instead is you get angry and then you go out and you project it onto other people. So anger that was unrecognized turned into resentment right? And this is so common in relationships. And I think why relationships, you know, over time, I don't know what the divorce rate is these days, but it's like, you know, relationships don't stand the test of time because there's so much uncommunicated anger, resentment, expectations, and it just ends up over time blowing up to where relations can, relationships can't recover from it. Or, you know, you go out and you you know, cheat or you start drinking or gambling or you start to do all, you know, the things we've talked about on some of the other shows is you start to do all these externally focused things to try to find happiness when what you really could be doing is you're just suppressing all this anger and this resentment. Yeah. I mean, I really did. I used it to mask my depression and to still be able to function in the world. So if I just held on to this anger I could still do my job. I could still be a mom. I could still get things done around the house, you know, just get everything accomplished. And then, wow, like you want to combine anger with perfectionism. <laughs> That's probably like the perfect cocktail to just keep running away from everything, but seem like you're getting everything done. So yeah, I just felt like this last week anger popped up and the situation was, you know, a conflict that hasn't been fully resolved and something came up and my first reaction wasn't anger. It was to sort of uh, run away from it. Like, yeah, okay, that's fine. No big deal. I'll handle it. I'm not going to worry about it. And I sort of didn't speak how I actually felt in that moment, which was the anger. So I just dismissed it. And then as I start, I woke up the next morning and I was mad and I was like, God, how dare that person not see from my point of view or that person not communicate with me the way I would have communicated about the situation or, you know, and then, and then the feelings that were still related to what I hadn't dealt with in the conflict. So all this stuff bubbled up and I just found myself sitting in anger and that's what really made me dig into it. And realize that it is, it truly is this burial ground where it's a, it's a anchors actually on, on the spectrum, which I'm going to talk about this, I think in show is there's a, 
there's a spectrum of emotions and they all carry different vibrations. And so at the one of the lower vibrating emotions, and this has been scientifically proven actually with muscle testing is anger. And so if you're walking around in a constant state of maybe you're not like blowing up at people all the time, but it's repressed, it's just always kind of there and your internal self-talk, you know, is judging people or projecting at people or blaming people, that's anger. And so you can't necessarily flip from anger to a higher vibrating emotion like love or peace or joy or harmony, you have to kind of take the steps up the ladder to get to those. So by releasing layers of anger um, over time or kind of exploring and getting curious about your anger, that's how you'll start to uncover what you're really angry about. And so what I did is that's what I did. I sat down. I'm like, okay, what are you angry about? You're not really mad at this person, what's the emotion underneath the anger? And what I realized was it was not being heard, not being communication. Number one, that's probably one of my biggest things that I value in any relationship is just communication, honest communication. So like my boundary was crossed, dishonesty, and all things that have been um, hurts in the past. So those emotions were what was underneath the anger. And so what I always say is the emotions are mine, right? So instead of sitting there blaming this other person that they made me mad, it's like, no, actually, well, they did. They triggered anger, but what was actually underneath it that I had buried. So let me give you some tips to handle anger because this is kind of what I did. And um, I think it'll help you because just with everything going on in the world right now, especially if you're still watching the news, like how can you not be angry? So, but this is more related to you personally. So if you find yourself getting triggered with anger, the number one thing you want to do, which I'm always going to say is awareness. Be emotionally aware of the anger. Notice it. Wow, I'm pissed right now. And connect to it so that you can figure out what the underlying feelings are like I did. You know, I felt mad, but it was like there was other stuff underneath it. Why was I mad? I was mad because I felt like someone was dishonest with me. I felt like someone didn't communicate with me. I felt like a boundary was crossed. So those were the feelings that were underneath the anger. And it was justified right? Which brings me to the second step, which is accepting it. You guys, it is okay to get pissed off. It's okay to feel any of the feelings that you have. It's just being aware of it and accepting that you get to have it. That's half the battle because then you actually can take the time to process it, to, you know, again, get curious about where the buildup is and why you're exploding or why you're doing the behaviors that you're doing. So accepting it is huge. Don't judge being angry as a bad thing. You know, anger has this guilt associated to it, you know, guilt and shame around like, well, I don't get to be mad at that person. I'm not allowed to be mad. Or if I come across as an angry person, I'll be thought of as this or that. There's no guilt. There's no shame. There's no judgment behind your emotions. So don't judge it. And then part of acceptance, like I said, is it's exploring it. Why are you mad? Like what has happened in the past that feels similar to you? And truly like what boundaries or what values of yours are being crossed that you need to look into and then communicate and express, which is the third tip in handling anger. You got to express it. You got to communicate it. And even if it's not in that moment, which usually isn't the time when you're dealing with, you know, loved ones, close relationships with spouses, family, kids, in the heat of a moment, if you are responding from a place of anger, it's probably not going to be the most healthy dialogue, the most healthy back and forth. So, wait until the anger subsides and you figure out what's underneath it 
And then you get to communicate about it and say, Hey, when we, this happened, or when we had that conversation last night, I felt angry because a boundary was crossed, or I felt angry because you could have just communicated with me. And that way you're coming from a place of what your truth is, of what you were angry about, instead of just getting into the energetic battle, like two, you know, rams and you're just locked and, you know, not going to resolve anything. Another great way to express anger, I think, especially if you have kind of a pattern is journal about it, write it down, like start to realize your emotional triggers around anger. You know, I see it with like friends and clients. There's always patterns. Like if someone calls me, they're like, oh my God, you'll never believe what happened. And there's always like this pattern of things that trigger people. And, you know, for example, like I have a friend that gets really triggered by men and I brought it up to her one time and we talked about it and which what we realized is like in all of her relationships, her voice wasn't heard. She was never acknowledged. She was never appreciated, you know, for having her opinion or a difference of opinion. So when she's confronted with men, it really triggers her because that's just something that she hasn't totally resolved that it's okay, you know? So that's an example of that. But yeah, just identifying like the commonalities in your anger. You know, what are the typical things that are triggering you and why is that? And then the other way of expressing is it's almost, I don't want to say anger management, but it is in a way because anger does hold such a high charge. You can do things to release that. So let's say you know, you get in a fight with a spouse or, you know, someone at work, or you have a bad day at work because someone didn't acknowledge you. So rather than sitting there and, and stewing in it, move the energy out. So you can exercise, go for a walk. I think meditation and breath work really helps to control the nervous system, right? So that it's not auto on autopilot with anger. Yeah. So I think, you know, come up with an anger management plan. You know, if this person triggers me, then I'm going to do this. It's kind of like a if then, just so you have a plan so you can start to identify, wow, I really am running on a an anger program and I want to start working with that. And then finally, the last thing is, you know, like I said at the beginning, anger isn't always a bad thing. So if you take the energy of anger and you shift it into a more positive channel, you can use it for creativity. You can use it for to get things done. So let's say you've got a boss, right, at work, and he never acknowledges you. He never appreciates your value. He doesn't, you know say job well done and you're just frustrated and you're just resenting it and you're starting to hate your job. Well, you can either sit there and again, stew in that, or you take that energy of anger and you go, you know what? I'm done with this. I'm going to use this energy and I'm going to look for a new job, or I'm going to do a project that proves the point that this person is never acknowledging. So you can use it that way. You can use anger to create something new. Like let's say it's the same situation. You're really frustrated with your job. You hate it. You're just the grind on a hamster wheel. Maybe you use that energy of anger to create something new, start a new business, start a side gig, create, you know, get a hobby, something that channels that anger into something other than turning it against yourself or projecting it onto other people. You could take a self-development course, like let's say through your journey and curiosity around anger, you realize like for me is, you know, like learning how to set boundaries and not feel bad when I set a boundary. So I had to do a lot of self-work and study around boundaries and realizing that it was codependency and people pleasing and all these other things, why I always felt like I can't set a boundary. I'm going to disappoint somebody. So maybe it'll leave you, you know, lead you on a self-discovery journey or inspire you to read a book. So just shifting the energy of energy or the energy of anger into something creative is really, really powerful. So let's review your tips 
to handle anger. Number one is become aware of it. Number two is accept it. Number three is express it. And number four, use that energy for change. So hopefully the next time you guys find yourself angry, you'll be able to use those tips. And again, I just want to say like, whatever you're feeling, whatever you're going through right now, whatever your dominant emotional state is, just know that there's always a message in it. There's always something that wants to come up to be seen, to be healed, to be understood about yourself. And this is the journey of emotional awareness. And that's why I'm just so mission and purpose driven to talk about it and get people to understand that we're human beings and this is how we're navigating the world through all these emotions and then understanding what the message is behind the emotion. So this is coupled with the next episode next week that I'm going to talk about is how I used courage to overcome anger and move me forward out of depression. And, um, you know, it was just interesting because I felt courage came up as you have to be willing to look at why you're angry and want to change it. So that's what we're going to get into next week. So until then, I hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay noble and I'll talk to you soon. Much love.